Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with the Spellbook Demise deck yet again, with some changes that I've made to the list after the previous video, and just some playing around with the deck that I've done. Now, as you can see, one of the biggest things I've done is I've taken out the Kaikus, and I've bumped Star Hall to 3, uh, mainly because the biggest thing is that I really wanted to just draw into Star Hall, uh, specifically off of like my Rudra plays, my stuff like that. The thing is, searching Star Hall with the, it being the one of is typically pretty like inefficient in terms of how it's going to interact with the rest of your turn structure because you usually have to search it as like one of your last actions per turn, meaning that it's going to have to wait until next turn before it starts amassing counters on it. Meanwhile, if you have multiple Star Halls in your deck and you're capable of drawing one or multiple of them before your turn starts, before you start doing your like secrets, master, all that sort of play string. Then it's just going to gain tons of counters on it very rapidly. And basically, that attributes to your end game goal of killing your opponent. Specifically, usually with Jaugen. Uh, while Jaugen is not the be all end all, it is definitely like the biggest asset of this deck and what this deck is built around. Uh, but Jaugen being able to be large uh, on its own essentially means that you have turns where you're not going to have to use Fate or your mirror forces or your traps or whatever to protect the Jaugen. Because as it gets bigger and bigger off your Star Halls, then it's going to eventually just become an entity that can survive by itself because it will be the largest thing on the field and larger than anything your opponent can normal summon, uh, stuff like that. But basically it complements well with Rudra as well because if you have multiples of it, uh, you can just discard it or send it from field to grave. It will not trigger its field effect because its field effect, when it's destroyed on field and sent to grave to search a spellcaster, it has to specifically be destroyed by a card effect. Uh, and this sends, so that's an unfortunate lack of synergy. If this had, like, destroyed spellbook cards on the field, that would have been great. Because you could have you know, put some counters on this, destroyed, and searched. Uh, that would have been a really cool interaction, a neat interaction, but that's unfortunately not the way this card works. But it is still just an incredibly powerful draw card that fixes hands, that mediates plays, like, allows you to get more spellbooks in Grave to just let your fate resolve for its max value. Uh, it's overall just a really cool card. And so, basically... The biggest thing that this deck has over it versus last video was the fact that the Star Halls are in the list at the max quantity so that you can draw into these cards and then just start playing them and start basically making your Blue Boys and your Jaugen incredibly large and in charge. But anyway, not going to waste any more time on the deck section of this video. Let's just jump straight into the first game and see what sort of nonsense we have in store for us today. Alright, so going into the first game, my opponent gets to start, and I'm playing against Iradium, and he's playing his random kitchen sink nonsense deck. We call it the kitchen sink, because, you know, the whole saying of everything and the kitchen sink, that's the reason. But it's, uh, it's Dark Lord Burning Abyss Zoo invoked. <laughs> so all these engines just kind of try to work together and meld together. He uses the zoo engine to go into Kagetsuchi's and Minerva's to mill cards to make his Dark Lord engine live. The Dark Lord engine also allowed him to draw cards into his stuff. The Burning Abyss engine gives him further access into the zoo stuff, and then the Invoked engine is just a strong one-card play uh, off of a Laster that he's able to utilize. So it's just an it's an interesting little deck that he constantly brings back to use in videos for the channel. And I doubt that anybody that watches the videos takes it remotely seriously when they read the name of the title of the videos. Uh, but regardless, so. My first turn structure, I just used Rudra to draw into a bunch of cards. I knew I wasn't going to be able to set up Fate, and I was just trying to use my traps to amount some form of defense against that massive board that he put up. And luckily, I draw into Raigeki, so I just flip my Dimensional Barrier, calling it C, so his uh, so his Kagetsuchi's protection is turned off. And then he tries to Drancia my Star Hall away. I strike that just because I want to keep it. And then I Raigeki his board, and I was just like, just made it so easy. I had this like four or five turn long plan of how I was going to start dismantling his board over the course of, like like I said, four to five turns. But ultimately, like it just ends up working out in my favor to where I just draw the Raigeki and things are good from there. But so he kaijus off of my off of his interrupted kaiju slumber. He kaijus over my blue boy. Uh, but I was able to fade away his invocation, which might be the only copy he runs, depending on how tight the space is in his deck, which is just an, a massive, like, a massive plus for me uh, as far as how uh, things go. And so, I'm not really playing my turns out very optimally. This is the first game in the set of five that we've played. And so, ultimately, it was really, like, I was playing really sloppily. Like, I eternity back the Master without a Spellcaster on board and then had to force myself into waiting into an additional turn uh, and all that sort of stuff. I Storming Mirror forced his, uh, his Dark Lord Tezza, whatever, back to his hand. The one that gives battle protection for, as a hand trap, I bounced that to his hand 
and then I try to double power my blue boy, I fade away his set card, and then try to attack over his Superbia, to which he just discards the one that I literally just bounced that has battle protection. I just don't read these cards. I just know Ixchel is a draw card, and Superbia lets you special summon multiples. I don't read what the rest of the Dark Lords are, because I just assume that they're not that good or not relevant. But apparently that one was super relevant there, so I was like, oh, well, got me. But it's okay, because I'm still completely in control of this game, with my Star Halls making my blue boy huge. I've still got a good selection of spellbook plays available to me. I've still got a lot of cards. I've definitely beaten him in terms of card advantage. So it ultimately didn't really matter that much as far as the uh, power play. Uh, the literal power play, not uh, not resolving. But so I'm losing on only one category at this point, and that is life points. As you can see, I'm at 800 to a 72. But at this point, like I've just been clearing his stuff with fate. I've got my star hall boosting my blue boy. I've got all this stuff. I've got secrets that's already prepared to go for this turn. I'm just using Eternity, just looping back my banished resources, uh, using the Master on Eternity to get back my other fate. I can use this fate to return his set card to hand, so if it is a trap of some sort, I don't have to worry about it. And then I summon Jaugen and attack for game with Jaugen and Blue Boy, and then that's pretty much just the wrap. Now, it was a very sloppy game one, but all of my game ones with this deck seem to be pretty sloppy in terms of... I'm just like not 100% in tune with how the deck needs to be functioning, and it's like a warm-up game, I guess, but I guess I could just play a warm-up game before I start filming. I don't know. Questions for later. But anyway, so I open Triple Star Hall. <laughs> My opponent just sets a card and passes. Sets a card, sets a trap and passes. And I just go Triple Star Hall. They all start getting counters. Secrets into Blue Boy, and the Secrets was gotten off of Duality, I believe. And then uh, he uses Temptation, discarding his Superbia to take my Blue Boy to turn off my Master and my Fate and all that. So I just search for Rudra, use Rudra to uh, send my Star Hall to Grave, draw two more cards, and uh, get into uh, some stuff, get into a Demise play, and ultimately draw into Fate off of the draws that I got access to, and my Blue Boy is going to come back to me at the end of the turn anyway. So I'm like, that's great, we'll just set the Fate and we're good. But so he just draws and passes, he doesn't have anything really worthwhile. Uh, to go for, and I've already flipped my blue boy face down from previous turn off the fate, so that I can start establishing my eternity loops, uh, which is where you banish two cards off of your fate to book your blue boy, and then you have any other spellbook in hand, you flip your blue boy up, you add eternity to hand, eternity for the master that you banished, uh, you banish master and secrets off of your fate, and then you get the master back, you play the master, copy the eternity that you just used and add back secrets, and that way you get the two cards you just banished back, and you load up your graveyard while keeping your deck count pretty high as far as spellbooks. It keeps the maximum number of spellbooks in circulation for uh, for how your stuff starts to go. And then once you start getting into the later game, you start using that same play string in a different way, though. You start using it to recycle fates. You banish a fate off of fate, and then you eternity one fate back to your hand and use it to banish the other fate in a looping cycle. It just It's based off how your gameplay is going turn by turn by turn on how that ends up going. But so... I demise into a blue boy and I set it because I don't want to search and not have a place to set a card. And so he summons Terra Top into Tagatomborg and he attacks my face down blue boy. And I use my fate to flip my blue boy face up, getting my search and then also killing his uh, Terra Top and, uh, and dealing some damage. When we were playing the game, he said, Today I learned that fate can flip both ways. It's like, yeah, that thing actually does that. So. Because I had my blue boy face up already, I was able to flip the face down one, face up, get a search, and bypass the card of demise that was going to discard my uh, my hand in the end of the last turn. So that's why the blue boy got set. It was like it wasn't a misclick; it was a next level play of set blue boy so you're not searching a card that you can't use and then just discarding it with a card of demise. Nah, you set it so the next turn you can just flip the blue boy up and get a search as an extra card. But anyway, going into the next game, he starts with two BAs into a uh, into a terra top into or into a Invoker uh, with a Terra Top like interaction, just special summoning both BAs, the Graph and the Skarm, so soaked up both their effects. But getting Viper, being able to overland a Kagetsuchi with it, and then using a Nalaster invocation nonsense into a Caligula, which was a bit interesting. It was a bit weird, actually, uh, to say the least. But he uses uh, his Dark Lord card to bring his Ixchel back, and he's got the Raigeki Break in Grave. And so at this point, this is one of those games where he's finally figured out exactly what he needs to do to not let me win. <laughs> And that is keep spellcasters off my field. You, I can't fate him, I can't master him, I can't do any of that if spellcasters are not face up on my side of the field. So he's realized this by this point, and so he just dried into away my uh, my little blue boy, so I don't have anything on the board. And this is fine as far as the turn structure is going. I'm okay with this because I know that I have to deal with his Rageki Break trap. I know that I have to deal with the Dryden's. I've dealt with them both. Things have happened um, like in my favor to a degree. 
It's just that I've got this mirror force face down and I know that I could potentially, you know, use that to my advantage. But he decides to go for it. He doesn't know that the mirror force is down either, but he plays around the fact that one trap might be there. But with this, he could have been blown out by double trap. But it's one of those situations of, if I got it, I got it. Like, he could have been blown out by the storm mirror force and then my other set being solemn strike. Something like that. But he was able to pressure me to the point where it didn't end up mattering because I didn't have it. My other set was, I think, just a fate that I had no spellcaster on board for. Uh, but so he's figured out how this needs to go. He needs to keep me from keeping spellcasters on board so that I can't master, I can't fate, I can't do any of that. The most I can do is just try and get cards every turn and play traps. And his deck, as long as he can play around my mirror forces and stuff, is like better suited than mine is at playing through like engines not being used. Uh, but so, next game, I don't have that optimal of an opening hand, I just normal summon Jaugen, uh, use Rudra, and uh, draw some cards, set four, and pass. I end up having to Storming Mirror Forces a Laster back to hand, so I know he has a Laster in hand. I know, with the knowledge I have of his deck, there's not a lot of cards in his deck that have more than 1300 defense that he can normal summon. He's got Whip Tails, he's got Terra Tops, he's got Tour Guides. The only card that comes, he's got Alasters, the only card that comes to mind that I know that he can normal summon is Seer to attack over Jaugen. So I just turn Jaugen into a defense mode and start just cycling my plays out until like I get to a result essentially. Just trying to trying to get to meaningful nonsense. And I get a Star Hall established, so it's like, alright, we can start bumping this Jaugen up in attack power. And I'm not going to turn that Jaugen into attack mode until it at least gets to 1300 attack. Because I know that there's nothing in his deck that can attack over it other than Seer with the knowledge that I have of what he plays that is going to be able to get over that Jaugen uh, without being able to special summon. Uh, so, like, the Jaugen sitting at 1300 defense is just really strong. Like, as you can see, he's got Terra Top, he's summoned, he just keeps killing my blue boys. But that's really not doing anything for him majorly as far as, like, progressing his game state because he's not able to do anything with the Jaugen on board. And every turn that that Jaugen sits there, I'm just able to cycle into a new blue boy, do my eternity loop off of fate, setting blue boy, getting eternity, eternity adding back my master and adding back my secrets every turn, just getting my banished cards back, and just loading counters onto that star hall. That's the key thing, is that we're just stacking up counters on that star hall over and over and over again. Just to make it very, very effective for me to start doing things with my Jaugen, because that's the entire point of the game plan, is to make the Jaugen large. Make the Jaugen big. The Jaugen is the way that we're going to be winning this game once we have a large, beefy Jaugen. But so at this point, I've sort of established my win con. My Jaugens are huge. My Jaugens are naturally at 1700 attack now. I've got two of them as well, so if one dies, I'm okay with the other. So I just Rudra away my blue boy to get more cards because I don't need to start doing the fate flip flop shenanigans anymore. I'm at the point where I've gotten everything that I need as far as cycling of play strings and play structures around, and so I just start just attacking with Jaugens. And as you can see, I've gotten my way into my third Jaugen because we've just gone turn, turn, turn of me cycling cards, drawing cards, doing all this. Got to my three Jaugens, and all of those Jaugens are at 2k attack, even though there's only one Star Hall on the board. That Star Hall had like 17 counters on it because I've just played very efficiently and very effectively. But so last game, my opponent is going first, goes into a barrage, into a zoo play, has Teratop in his hand, which is, or not Teratop, has Tour Guide in his hand, which is really interesting, the fact that he opened that too, uh, but he just would rather normal summon his Whip Tail and make Kagetsuchi. Uh, he gets a decent mill off of his uh, stuff, he mills like Graph and Seer, <laughs> interestingly enough, so the Graph is able to float into a Skarm that he could use potentially, uh, but so he ends his turn, did he actually actually float into anything out of the deck? No, he just didn't. Uh, so he brought back the graph and then it died. <laughs> or maybe he graphed into Seer and then Seer brought back graph and then it just died. Can't remember exactly. That replay just went really fast. But so he is essentially doing the exact same thing that he realized that he needed to do in game three, and that is keep my blue boys off the board. So I Rageki him. Uh, I Rageki away his field, everything except the Kagetsuchi. You know, trying to get back into the game in some way, shape, or form. I believe I have access to his secrets as a set card. Uh, but he does still have access to the Raigeki break that is in his graveyard, and so he's just using his Dark Lord cards the, to uh, to his advantage, essentially, to reestablish his board. The Dark Lord part of his deck is definitely what's really carrying him throughout the games that he's uh, in good positions, because it's just really good at resetting his like his status of like having a board when I'm doing things like Raigekiing him, storming, mirror forcing him, fading him. Like, when he's allowed to play, the Dark Lord part of his deck is the one that's doing the most work against mine because it puts the most big bodies up at a time out of everything that he's actually playing. Like, all of his other engines, like the BA engine and the Zoo engine and the Evoked engine, 
not really doing a lot as far as pressuring me, but the Dark Lord engine is actually just doing the most as far as pressure. But so as you can see, he's just keeping my blue boys off my side of the field. He's just keeping my cards from being mine. <laughs> and so I've got access to a fate. I didn't have any knowledge of him having that kaiju in his hand. And so I was like, all right, well, I'll be able to fate. And then I've got the mirror force, so I should be good, right? But then, then he just kaijus over my little blue boy, then takes it back off of, uh, off of temptation. And then I have to storming him, so the kaiju goes back to his hand as well. So now I have knowledge of him having the kaiju. And so from here... My blue boy is gone, I don't have access to any of the little guys that I'm able to use to make plays, and ultimately it's just very bad for me. He's able to just turn one monster into attack mode and attack me. So, he played that game very, very well. Playing the game in the aspect of, don't let your opponent have a spellcaster on the field. Period. As soon as I put one out, kill it. Don't let it stay there. And that's how, that's how you beat this deck, essentially, is you don't let me resolve fate, you don't let me resolve master. That's how you beat this deck. You don't let it play. And the way you don't let it play, the way you can floodgate the deck out, is just keep spellcasters off the field. It's not even as like elaborate as anti-spell or imperial order. It's like if you have any way to keep a spellcaster off the field and I can't answer it, like turn by turn by turn, then I'm eventually just going to lose because I'll have all this card advantage off tower and all this stuff, but I won't be able to actually respond to your plays and my traps can only cover a limited scope compared to what Fate can cover and what Jaugen can cover and so all that sort of stuff sort of ties in hand in hand with how you're just going to start dismantling the spellbook strat and the spellbook deck in general but anyway as always guys thanks for watching let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and all that sort of nonsense definitely check out the links in the description to my facebook and patreon pages if you want to support me directly then patreon is the best way to do so it also gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month for the people that have supported me throughout the month of april the raffle giveaway at the end of this month is going to be a box of maximum crisis to those people who have supported me throughout the month of april it's just a fun way to say thank you and to give back to you and also it also gets you access into my personal discord server which is where i radium and all the people that i play with for videos come from so if you want to chat with me on a daily basis about random stuff talk with me about Yu Gi Oh, talk with me about all that stuff and play games for videos potentially then definitely check out that it's one of the reward tiers if you're interested but other than that if you want to indirectly support the channel and are looking to buy or sell cards then definitely check out second chance gaming's website which is also linked in the description they're a direct sponsor of me and this channel and i'm a big fan of how they do business with what i've dealt with it thus far both their pricing and shipping are top notch with what i've had to deal with so definitely check out their site as i've already said which is linked in the description and let them know that phoenix sent you but other than that again thanks for watching thanks for your time as usual again let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and take care guys i will see you in the next video.